Callie Finn, there was a shakeup in the draft lottery. Everybody was expecting that the Los Angeles Sparks, who had the best odds to get the number one pick, would end up with the number one pick. But the Dallas Wings had something to say about it, and they were the winners of the Paige Becker sweepstakes. Dallas Wings secure the number one spot. Los Angeles Sparks actually get the second uh, pick. Chicago Sky get the third pick, and the Washington Mystics got the fourth pick. And so that is just a list of how the, the WNBA draft will play out for now. We know that teams can swap and move spaces and things like that. But we know the top three picks. I don't think the Wings are giving it up by their reactions. It doesn't seem so. Arike, Arike was just um, elated <laughs> with joy from getting the number one pick. She posted about it on, on X. You know, the reactions were so funny. And, and you know, it was, it's good to see teams and players reacting like that, you know. But it also speaks to... Paige Beckers and, and who she is and what she is and why a team would be so excited to get her. I mean, she's a she's a franchise changing player. Kurt Miller. Uh, is this a little shade, Callie? I'm not it's sure. Little, it's a little shade. Um, it's a little shade because he's he's got the number one pick in the organization <laughs> that just parted ways with him gets the number two pick. So I think you can you can take that as a little a little shade. Yeah, I, so. I mean, Co Kurt Miller, the GM now of the Dallas Wings, the former head coach of the Los Angeles Sparks. So he leaves that organization to then go on to a new organization and steal the, the number one pick from, if you will, from the Sparks. And look, they were not guaranteed that, but, you know, it happened. But they, they were thrilled. They're overjoyed. And I could envision, I could envision once I wrap my head around this, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I was sort of, I actually wanted Paige to go to D.C. and reunite with Aaliyah. But then yeah. I, I realized the Wings basically, I'm sorry, I realized that the Mystics during the season, they, they that ship kind of sailed on them when they decided to win some games down the stretch. And so I was like, I could see Paige in L.A. And yeah, she's big time. You know, she deserves L.A. But you know what? That's not what happened. But in terms of just the basketball on the court, I could see a Paige Beckers and an Arike duo. And you know what else? This might help Dallas in terms of, because there were some questions around Satu Sabli and whether she may leave. So maybe this makes the Wings even more attractive and want, you know, entices other free agents. What do you think? Absolutely. I mean, I think my immediate reaction was, wait, am I missing something? Because I would have thought that the like overall unanimous reaction would be like, oh, this is good. But that wasn't the immediate reaction. It was like, wait a minute. I mean, I've seen um, draft projections since the lottery now couch for the idea that Paige would would take an extra year and all this. And I'm like, where? wait a minute. Like, what are we doing? Dallas is a great sports market. I've seen a lot of people talk about like, you need your stars to be in Los Angeles. Like, there are lots of stars in Dallas. Like I, I don't need. And I don't down? think I don't think this reaction though is about Dallas, right. the city, or I the player. I, I think I it's about issues yeah. around that organization. Right. And but here's what I'll say. Like uh, we can go down the list of those things. I mean, you look at their last number one pick. Maybe that's part of the problem. Charlie Coll Collier. She's not in the league anymore. So maybe we're like people are like, oh, maybe she she's not gonna be developed there or whatever. But there's a different GM. There's also going to be a new head coach. We don't even know who their head coach is going to be at this point. Like to me, the the outlook should be optimism and excitement. Like this is that's what the the time this time is in the league. Like if you're hiring a new coach and you do have a GM, those are exciting things. And I also saw people joking about like maybe Arike and Paige not being a good fit. Like <laughs> I, I would argue actually to the contrary, if if your issue or concern is that Arike likes to have the ball in her hands too much and that's not gonna work for Paige, I assure you it will not be a problem. You have to think this is only thir Paige's third, second healthy, I just fell to my knees, thank you, Lord, exactly, <laughs> Arike. Because she, I think that she knows playing off Paige would probably be super synergistic. Like we, we talked about. How Paige is someone in this third season, her third collegiate season, is still working on being more aggressive, right? Yeah. Not being too comfortable, not being such a facilitator, like being more selfish. That's something that she has to learn. It's For not sure. 
in her nature. So that means that, she, and she's also, we know, a pro-ready guard. So it's not gonna take a bunch of adjustment on the court. I mean, that makes so much sense to me. Like, it seems like it would be perfect. Personally, I think that what we're seeing is there are a lot of UConn fans who are still a little bit salty from um, Arike's NCAA tournament heroics, her buzzer beaters against UConn. Maybe yes, that's what and that we know her and Gino have a little history too, so. Yeah, exactly, but I, I would think like, you should be super excited about this. I mean, I think about, obviously we talked about Arike coming back, but Tierra McCowan coming back, Polani Brown, those are protected veterans. And then like you mentioned, Satu is hitting free agency. Natasha Howard is a free agent who has said right. that she's not coming back. So those are the people that are are leaving and now you can you can build something different. And so I think that to me that's exciting. I for Paige sure. in Dallas seems really cool to me. And how I mean, how about the respect she's already getting for Arike to like post what she did. So, you know, I saw it was reported that the Wings only had upper level season tickets left. Um, when someone got a hold of them, to, that was yesterday, someone said this. So when someone finally got a hold of someone today, they only had upper seats left. They didn't even sell upper level tickets two seasons ago. So we already see what kind of draw that Paige Beckers is. They may have to have some games in a bigger arena, you know. Um, and maybe even more on TV. ESPN's manager of pro basketball programming, she spoke at UConn recently, and she said that the network is going to build next season's lineup largely around where Paige ends up like you want to talk about respect that's that's some good stuff right there that's a lot of respect yeah look Paige Be Paige Beckers is blockbuster but you know what like I know the initial shock for the the Sparks and you know the Chicago Scott well Chicago didn't want the number one pick because they figured if they got it then they would have to swap with Dallas which Dallas had those rights but um look the Sparks get the number two pick again and look this is not I get it it's not Paige but you know what it could be a reunion between Kiki Ariafen and um, and Cam and Brink. Cam, Cameron Brink, right, a former yeah. Stanford teammate, and so I do wonder that post could be a little crowded. But I mean, you have to you have to take Kiki, right? Uh, you don't you don't pass up on Kiki Ariafen. So you know um, it's. And, and look, I think that ultimately the account tweeted like the number two pick worked out great last year. Yes, it did. And that was Cameron Brink. So, it, it, you know, they should not feel too slighted. Of course, you always want to get number one. But the, the top three picks, at least projected right now, um, are pretty strong picks. And so the Chicago Sky as well, you know, they have something to look forward to. This is a deep draft class, Cali. It is so deep. I mean, look at some of these names on here. You know, uh, Paige Beckers, we know. Uh, we talked about Kiki already. Uh, you also have AZ Fudd on here. You have Tahina Pow Pow. You have uh, so many players. A, pra a player like Ayoka Lee from Kansas State. I've seen some, some, some draft, mock drafts showing her in the second round, which is crazy to me, you know? So there's so many players, you know, potentially in this draft. Olivia Miles also in most drafts, cons you know, considered a top three consensus pick. So that could be who the Chicago Sky get. And Tyler Marsh, the new head coach of the Sky, who you know well, he tweeted like, hey, last year the third pick worked out well for us because that is Camilla Cardoza. So, you know, no one, these teams who got the second and third pick should not feel slighted. Um, you know, I just want to give you the last word on this draft and the, the potential deepness of it. And will it live up to last year's draft or be kind of on that level? Yeah, I mean, I think that you spoke to it. These are superstars. Like I think of somebody like an AZ Fudd. Right now, the women's college basketball world is like at the edge of their seats, just waiting for her to make her return. Like players like that, you talked about Ioka Lee, Tahina Pow Pow, like there are stars in this class. Rory Harmon is a superstar out of Texas. Like these are players, and Nisa Mara, we didn't touch on her from LSU, but that's somebody who transferred into the program, made a huge difference and like, I mean, Georgia Amore, we, I feel like we don't talk about her enough. I mean, she's obviously not super tall, but incredible, incredible player. And so I think that these are all players that will draw crowds and change the game. And that's what we just saw this past season. And I love how the, the you know, most recent draft class have owned that. Like at the, at the draft, you saw Angel Reese say like, you know, we made the difference. Now we're ready to kind of like pass the baton and, and see the next class do the same. And I feel like they're absolutely equipped to do that. And so I think that 
um it's it's exciting obviously i'm excited today that's like the vibe but yeah. i'm genuinely like I think that I mean I like looking forward. I think the draft is just such an exciting time because you see these new infusions of of personality. There are so many personalities even in this draft class that are going to just be really cool to see on the court. I think that's what I mean. I, obviously, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark are incredible players, but part of what made them so enticing is like who they are, their personalities, and there are so many players like that coming in. So, only up for the WNBA. Look, I'm excited already. We have college season right now, women's college basketball to focus on, but I'm already so amped up for the WNBA draft and next season. So exciting times to come. Thank you, Callie Finn, for joining me today.